Did you know you can help reduce the risk of wildfire simply by choosing fire-resistant plants and knowing where to place them in your garden? In the next half hour, we'll be in Edmonton, Alberta, touring one of Canada's largest greenhouse stores. We'll show you a fantastic selection of trees, shrubs, and plants you may want to use in your own fire-resistant landscape. Hello. Hey, I'm Cisco Morris. I was wondering if Jim Hole's around anywhere. Yeah, he is. Oh, la la. Hey, you're right there. How are you doing? Oh, great. great, great. What a fantastic garden center you have here. Thank you very much. I just love it. You know, we're here today to learn what role garden centers can play in helping homeowners and communities have beautiful gardens and yet have gardens that are more resistant to fire. Well, we got the professionals here. Let's go have a look at some neat ideas oh, for that. Great. Come on. I can't wait. Hey Cisco, there's some really neat things that are happening now in backyards. People are looking at their back decks as kind of the extra room of their house. So there's fantastic things happening out there. Some really exciting things. Look at this incredible patio set. I gotta see how comfortable it is. Hey, it makes me tall. I'm as tall as you are now. <laughs> Almost. Hey, you even brought some uh, sprouts for me. Oof, yeah. Little chewy. Those are Whoa. fake sprouts. Those. Oh, they're fake. Oh, wouldn't you know? Man, oh man. And you know, people are really into containers now, huh? They're really big now. Containers are great because you can stick them on the back deck. If you've got small spaces out there, they're fantastic, easy to grow. They look great from day yeah, one. It's the big trend. But you know what I love? People don't realize all the things you could do with trellises in there like this. This trellis is a work art in its own right. And think of all sorts of clematis and other vines growing up that. Oh, man, it's fantastic. It's like your own private sanctuary in the backyard. Yeah, they're great. I love that. Now, one thing I want to show you, too, the fire, oh. fire pits. These little fire Oh, I love these yeah, things. Me, too, I know. Uh, on a nice night, you have the fire burning. They're fantastic. Oh, yeah, all your but, friends over. But there are some things you have to kind of watch for. Make sure you've got a screen on the top. Because yeah. a lot of people have an open fire, and these sparks are going everywhere. Oh, so have the screen on there. This yeah. one's got a great screen. It's nice, fine mesh size on there. Whoa. But also, too, when you're looking at fires in the backyard, check with the local fire department. Check on the regulations, because they change from city to city, oh, town to town. Not everybody can have a fire pit. It's, Exactly, got to watch it so because it is very specific to certain regions and certain municipalities. And I'll bet you you got to tell the kids, don't be touching this, you know, when they're cooking their Brussels sprouts over the open <laughs> fire, you know, you don't want to be hitting this. That could get a little warm, but boy, they're beautiful, so where they're legal. And of course, you're not going to want to build a bonfire in there, just a nice small fire. and Exactly, keep it small, keep it smaller. For somebody looking at a fire, nothing beats that when you're sitting with friends. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. Maybe a beer and a hot dog. Ah, oh, no, maybe a <laughs> Brussels sprout. <laughs> hey, you think that was good? Wait, do you see what's coming up next? You know, Cisco, containers are becoming really popular on the back decks, backyards, and there's some great things you could do in the backyards to have that blast of color and yet not too much work. I've got some great containers oh right here. Boy, I love doing containers. You know what I love about containers? Is that you can do a big artistic composition in one little pot and oh look God. like Monet, you yeah. know? I agree with you. Hey, thanks for letting me stand on the pallet, by the way. Yeah. Now I know what it's like to be big, you know? <laughs> hey, all right. Oh boy, did we get to design this? Yeah, there's, the, there's one thing before we start, though. I think it's really important is that if you look at this peat moss here, this is nice and moist. Yeah. That's great, but you know what? I've got a container here that's really dry peat moss, and peat moss is flammable. You're kidding. No, they don't think about that. So if you leave your container empty in the summertime or the spring, you're late getting plants, planting something, and somebody's a smoker, they throw a cigarette butt in there, boom, thinking burn for a long time. Oh. So keep in mind that you want to plant these babies up. Ah, Don't have the dry peat moss. Point. Don't let them sit no. there and they look horrible all empty or full of dead plants, you know. Exactly. So you're going to plant one up? Yeah, yeah, let's plant one up. Hey, the artist is at work here. Hey, we need some color in here. Now we got this millet grass. That's yeah. going to get really tall so we can have some more height. Oh, definitely, yeah. This will be the best you and I designed this. Oh, it could hey, be the best right, container here. going here. You get on this <laughs> yeah, okay. one right here. You know, people think you just stick them in without even messing with the root ball. Well, one thing we always do is do this spread the roots out because they're going to want to root in the container better and don't play around with the plant too much stick it dig it in your put your hand there dig it in get her in there That's cover it up like boom you're done here, here's it's, another one it's not waste plant yeah okay how come i'm doing all the work what's, what's happening here what's going on here again pull hey, roots apart. No dummy. stick it in here like that yeah 
And you know, on a little on a little one like this little dianthus here, you know what I do a lot is I'll just break. That's a great home, idea. Like yeah, that. yeah. We can see how many fibrous roots are in yeah, there. You want to open that, that plant really up. It going. Sometimes I'll pull the bottom ones off if yeah. they're winding up. But yeah. we're gonna stick that on the side there. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, oh, yeah. that's a perfect oh, spot look for that. that color. <laughs> is this gonna be a million dollars? Here's one for you over on that <laughs> yeah, other yeah. side. Hey, we need something weeping over the side. So often people forget, you know, that uh, it adds interest and it makes the pot look nicer if something's weeping over the side. So these beautiful scaviolas are wonderful plants. Yeah, exactly. Bloom all summer long. I know, and you get that three-dimensional exactly. look. You know, that's fantastic. I love it. Exactly. Hey, how about sticking? Okay, I'll do that one. All right, yeah. That's... Maybe we should, uh, for a little uh, added artistic effect, we'll do some a white one over on Whoa. this side. Brilliant. That's hey. brilliant. Hey, and I got an idea too here. How about one of these beautiful petunias? Yeah, here? there's a good trailer. That's a good trailer. I'm gonna stick on the back side here, so it kind of trails down. Yeah, and you know, I have seen hummingbirds hit those babies many a time they love those petunias so they're wonderful and you know the other thing people sometimes forget is that you want a pot with good drainage exactly if it's flat on the bottom you need to raise that up yes. a little so the water yes, could yes. drain out yeah. and uh, and and then don't forget we'd have to water this in right away and and do you usually add fertilizer uh, before you plant it or? i usually do it after i give it a bit of a shot and then some plants feed heavier than others so if they're a little heavier feeders like petunias i give them a shot every week other ones uh, maybe a little bit every now and then ah, great and don't forget to keep it watered that's the key hey this baby's got to oh. be worth a million dollars okay <laughs> but we got just a couple things about the soil now the soil is really important here look at this you got to have a good lightweight soil. You want to make sure it's moist because that peat moss can be a fire risk. Oh, yeah. But you need the drainage here. we got a lot of perlite in here. Look at that. Look at this nice mixture here. Oh, it's going to allow those beautiful. plants to root in nicely. Lots of there so yeah. you get good drainage. Good drainage, exactly. And then the container, too, is a fire-resistant container. Oh. That's really right. important That's as good. well. This one's not wood. Oh, so. so this whole operation here isn't going to be very heavy, I bet. Well, they're pretty heavy, so we need oh, something to kind of... Oh, maybe that kind of... Oh. Oh. <laughs> Look, I found this pot caddy. Uh, back there, it, it's somewhere on the shelves, yeah. and this would raise it up to give you that good drainage we talked about. Yeah. And you know why I love these? Sometimes I grow tomatoes in right, my containers, right, right. and uh, as things grow up in my yard, the shade and the sun kind of change positions. I can roll this over for the good sun all day long. I have the best tomatoes of anybody on the block. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, we've shown you a lot of cool things, but if you want to find out which trees and shrubs are fire resistant and beautiful, hang on, we'll be right back. I thought this is sunny Edmonton, and here it is, raining in Alberta. Holy cats. Well, the good thing is we're inside the greenhouse where we're sheltered from the rain. Oh, great time to be in that nursery. <laughs> Cisco, I got some great perennials oh. over here they can put oh. in your backyard. Oh, I love this salvia, Jim. Isn't that fantastic? I love this. You know, hummingbirds love these salvias. Deer don't tend to eat them. And they're drought towered as a rock, and and they're resistant to fire. How can you ask for a better plant than that? Well, that's the thing too. And there's tons of choices too. You don't have to. If you're looking at fire resistant plants, you're not limited. There's many, many that's good the plants key, out isn't there. It? Yeah, look at the daylilies here. Oh, I love these plants. You know what I love about them? Besides the fact you can eat them, throw that on a salad. Oh la la. <laughs> but you know what I love about them? Now we've got these recurrent bloomers that just bloom and exactly. bloom and bloom. Really exactly. cool plant. Look at the little violas too. Great fire resistant plants, super tough plants. Oh yeah. Really, I love the flowers, it's very delicate. Yeah, they're so pretty and they blend so well with other plants. Your bulbs come up right through them. Exactly, that's and look at this. Nice touch. Geraniums oh. too, that's your, what, is that one of your favorite plants? I love geraniums. You know what I love about these hardy geraniums that sometimes people don't know, is when they're done blooming, if they take a break, you just cut them way down exactly. and they grow right back exactly. up, look fresh and beautiful. You don't get that powdery mildew. Yep. Oh, la, la. Now, I got a bunch of sedums here, too. Look at these ones here. These are great plants. And the thing is, these plants don't have these volatile oils that burn up. So these ones ah. here are great. They're drought tolerant, too. So fantastic and plants. And great ground cover. So if you don't want to just, you know, because bark can burn. Exactly. So using ground covers instead of bark can be really, really nice. And, you know, uh, 
these people don't even notice as I see them. They think this is a broccoli plant or something, yeah. you know? And they have those beautiful blooms in the fall. But you haven't eaten one of those, have you? No, no, I haven't ever eaten one of these. No, no. But, you know, uh, I always tell people, cut them down uh, uh, two-thirds yep. right on in the first week of June, and then they grow back full and they don't flop That's over. Right. Butterflies love these buggers, too. Great, great. Balance. Wonderful. Now, wonderful. The, one, the one thing is, too, I've got here, I've got some grasses here. Oh, yeah. Grasses are great, but here in our part of the world, over the winter time, they dry out. So they can be a fire hazard. Oh. So you got to keep them away from the house. They're great, but just keep them away from the house. So, uh, and also in the spring, you want to cut those down so you don't get the old foliage with the new foliage. That exactly, doesn't look so well. Exactly. You know, Jim, I love using grass in the landscape. I love the fine texture and how well it contrasts with plants with big, bold leaves, you know. Aren't they great? Oh, yeah. And this, this purple fountain grass, three feet tall, beautiful purple leaves and purple flowers. If only it would live through the winter. Oh, la, la. <laughs> you know, I've got, I put a lot of grasses in my yard, but you have to kind of watch it. I've got this fountain grass here, but they will get dry when you have those periods of drought. Yeah. So you got to keep them all watered. And if it gets dry out there, just be very careful because it can be a fire hazard. Keep them away from the house. That's really important. You know, Jim, I imagine most of these perennials and other plants, if we don't water them appropriately during dry periods, can become less fire resistant. Exactly. We've got to watch that, maintain the water, keep them in good shape. That's really important. Well, listen, I've really enjoyed meeting all these beautiful yeah. little plants, but I want to see the big guys now. Cisco, let's go check out the trees and shrubs. All let's go. Right. Here's the big guys, that's what I'm looking for. These are the big guys in the backyard, no doubt about it. Yeah, now fruit trees, they're fire resistant, and you get beautiful fruit, it looks attractive on the plant, and you get to go out there and pick yourself a big old apple, too. Well, I'm kind of hooked on the edible stuff. I like the ornamental value, but if I can have something I can eat, I like it even more. Uh, me too. You know what I like to remind people? Thin your fruit before it's the size of a nickel, that way you get the same amount of fruit in a lot less apples. They're so big it takes three guys to bring one into the house. Oh la la. <laughs> All right, what else you got over here? Well, we got some really big trees up here. Now the thing is, if you can have this again, these gorgeous trees in your backyard, and you can also be smart about fire, and I've got a plant here that's say maple. Oh, you're talking honker here. That's Holy cats, thing. how do you bring that? How do you get this in your car? I think you, uh, I think you need some help, a big truck, <laughs> yeah. lots of friends. Oh yeah, lots of friends. So this is a big type of red maple here. Yeah, this is a red maple. And what it does too, you got you see the trunk is all clean up here too. So you're not seeing any hazard as far as fire because this is quite clean. Oh, so, yeah. but again, don't put it right next to your house yeah, where the branches yeah. hang over the top. Really big. Exactly. Find the right spot, get it where it's wide open out there so you can have that tree grow nicely. So just keep away from the house and you're set. So that's the real point here. You can have whatever kind of plant you want, but it's placement that really matters. That's a critical factor, exactly. Yeah. Now, you don't want to be pruning this to keep it six feet uh, I uh, don't think so. I don't think so. And uh, I've noticed uh, you've got a really interesting tree here. It's a birch tree. Yeah, this is a weeping birch. And what they've done is somebody's very creative, very artistic, and has made this kind of, well, it looks like a heart to me, oh, kind of wound it around and spiraling up. So think about these trees, too. There's so many options. There's so many interesting trees out there. No limit to it. Anniversary present for your wife. That's right. Look at the heart. That's that sings yeah, anniversary Who knows, out you there. You might get a Brussels sprout casserole yeah. if you do that. <laughs> wow. So you know, there's so many different sizes of trees, and most deciduous trees, unless they have volatile oils in them or something like that, are fire resistant. So the key is place them in the right place. And this you want where everybody can really see it. It's incredible. Well, exactly. Place it in the right spot, but don't be afraid to go to the garden centers, talk to the experts down there they'll tell you where to put the tree and they get the right tree for the yard and then just be careful you know make sure you water it when you first put it in find out the requirements it has some trees need more water than others you know I always tell people if you've got a bunch of plants that need extra water plant them together plant the drought things together that's a great point keep everything clustered together it's a high water demanding plant but yeah the thing is when you plant the tree Give it the water, give it the good start, and maintain that water throughout its whole entire life. And then you'll have a beautiful plant that's fire resistant and a beautiful garden to boot. Exactly. Get those birds coming in and have eat those apples there. It's a great way to spend some time. Yeah, I'm going to be eating those apples, not those birds. <laughs>
Right Plant, Right Place is the name of the game when it comes to creating a fire-resistant landscape. Here's a couple of experts to show you how it's done. We live with forests and with wildlands, and it's just as easy for a fire to move from a house into the wildlands or forests as it is to move from the forest and wildlands into the house. And I think it's really important that people protect their homes and protect their property from that kind of fire. It's great to see when we have the landscape professionals and nurseries working with people to, to put in fire resistant plants around their home to protect their home from encroachment of fire from outside towards their home. Landscapers and nursery professionals, they can help you to have whatever you want in your yard for landscaping and still build in the barriers to fire, to, to build in the protection for your home and still allow you to have all the beauty that you want. Take steps to make your home and the community more resistant to fire. Don't touch that dial, because we've got a whole lot more to show you. OK, Cisco, come on. I want to show you some of the really neat things in gardens now. We're right in the middle of a rock garden, and I love rock gardens. There's so many interesting plants you can grow in a rock garden. Hey, too. hey check out this sedum growing in the little great? holes in your volcanic rock oh, I here. I love that. And that you'd think that that would be uh, an environment that's just too dry for those guys, but look how well they do in there. Wow. You know what, and one of the things I like is the way that you've mixed stones and given this natural look to this garden. Well, it's sort of, people have a, they look got that kind of rocky mountain, that mountain look, and I think it's a great look because you can have, you can have color all year long. It's just yeah. fantastic. Beautiful yeah. use of slate. And exactly. It's just great. It's really neat. Hey, tell me about some of these trees now. You know, uh, you know, one thing I want people to know is that you can have, you can plant anything you want as long as you place it right and still have a fire resistant garden. Well, that's exactly it. And you can now get some dwarf evergreen trees. You don't have to get, it's nice to have the giant evergreen trees, but you can plant these little dwarf ones out in say a spot in the garden away from the house. They look fantastic. You don't have to worry about that, the fire issues. So there's many choices now. That's right. And so, you know, one thing we want to tell people, you don't want to put a conifer right against the house. That's not a good idea. They're well, pretty flammable. That's something everybody does. They put that cedar right by the house. It grows in the eaves trough. There's pruning issues. There's fire issues. So get it away from the house. That's, that's right. the thing to do. Right plant, right place. Put that plant in the spot where it's got room to grow and be exactly. a nice thing because you don't want to be whacking the living tweedle yeah, on everything, right. making it look so ugly, bad, oh bad. Some people, now you have a lot of touches in this garden to make it more attractive. That's one of the things I've noticed. A lot of different plants with a lot of different color. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, if you plant it right, you can have color all season long. The thing is, you can have stuff that blooms in the cold weather, stuff that blooms in the heat. So you've got limited choices. It just, it's, it's up to your imagination. Well, these ground covers you use, like I, this little dianthus over here. Boy, a ground cover doesn't have to be boring, that's for sure. Well, that's for sure, yeah. Lots of choices out there. Now, you add other touches into this garden. For instance, that light post you have there with that, with that one plant looks like a big old hippie to me, you know? <laughs> well, people love that plant. <laughs> it's, it's a trilling bamboo, which apparently is kind of actually a kind of a modified putting green grass. But it gives you that nice big mop head. Yeah. And it looks great. It does look like kind of a hippie's kind of a thing, you know, going on in the 60s. Yeah. Also, we took a few coleus plants in the top. We've got some with biddens in it, the yellow flowered annual plant. Wow. Tons of choices. Yeah, so flowers just coming out all through. Yeah. So hanging planters adds uh, season-long color out in your garden. You can't beat it. And the thing is, you get that season-long color, you've got these really interesting textures, you've got this trailing three-dimensional type plants. Again, tons of choices. And then I notice you use a lot of art in your garden out here, and that adds kind of an elegant touch to the garden. Well, exactly. You know, Cisco, that's the thing that's happening now, is we find that people want to have that art in the garden. They want to have these different little seating areas, fancy trellises, all kinds of stuff. And also, too, there's things you can do, like the pathways. You have shale in here. You know, I love pathways because not only are they attractive, but they break the garden into separate compositions. You can do a beautiful garden here, a beautiful garden there, and you can walk in the garden, be a part of it all, be with the, the baby beetles and the hummingbirds. Oh, la, la. They're wonderful. Oh, they are. I mean, you can get out and examine. You can get the kids out. You can relax out there. And what I've got here, too, is some nice uh, slate rock. 
that we can use as a nice access party. It keeps your feet nice and dry, but also acts as a fire break. Oh yeah, you know, that's true. And all your pathways through here have uh, uh, fire resistant products that aren't going to help a fire burn. Well, that's exactly it. We've got the benches there too made of stone. We've got the statues made of stone. So the thing is, those aren't going to burn. I don't care how hot the fire is or how it's going to, they're going to be there for a long time. Well, you know, that brings up a point that a landscape is an, is an investment. It is an investment. I think that's the important thing to remember. You can have a beautiful landscape, fire resistant and a great investment. The thing is too, if you look at trees in your backyard, keep them away from the house because of the fire issue, but they will give you, they will reduce your utility bills because they'll keep the heat out in the summertime, break the wind in the wintertime. So you've got a great plant out there that's going to be great for keeping those bills down. Boy, that's such a point. And you know, now anyone can have a beautiful garden like this. I know this is done by some real pros, but if you visit your local garden center or your local landscape professional, these are the experts at that that can help you have a beautiful garden that is fire resistant. Well, exactly too. And you can have the very simple, just ask the, the, one of the garden center people a question about a particular plant, or you can have a full blown design done. So there's all kinds of options for all kinds of budgets. Well, I'll tell you what, this is one of the most beautiful gardens I've seen for a long time and a beautiful garden center. Jim Holt, thank you so much. You know, I think we've all learned a ton about how garden centers and landscape professionals can help us have a beautiful garden and a beautiful community, and yet it's gonna be more fire resistant. What more can you ask for exactly. than that? Well, it's great to have you here, Cisco. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Jim. Now we've given you some great ideas on materials and vegetation that make your yard or community green belt more resistant to a wildfire. Don't wait till you smell smoke. Visit your local greenhouse or landscape professional and get started today. For more information, log on to wafirewise.net.